James Zerner, so the Gruen Truth, here with Richard Abraham of Glory Kickboxing. So, uh, Richard, how'd you get started in kickboxing? Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I got started actually a little later than most. Uh, I got started at 23 years old. Um, I was always into little boxing, little like street fighting when I was younger, and then um, I slowly kind of made a move and uh, went to the gym for the first time and fell in love with the sport ever since. What uh, what sports did you play when you were growing up? Oh, I played you know basketball, baseball, hockey, um, some soccer. Um, just really the kind of I guess more traditional, basic type stuff. I my family wasn't really big into to martial arts. Um, I always was. I always watched Jackie Chan, you know, Bruce Lee, Jet Li. When I was growing up, I always thought it was awesome. Just you know, my family was more of um, you know with the baseball, basketball. Just traditional type stuff, football, and um, it wasn't until, you know, later in life um, that I got into really Muay Thai and kickboxing. So, uh, Cubs or Sox? What? Cubs or Sox? You're, you're Chicago. <laughs> uh, yeah, I go I go more to the Cubs, you know. I don't, I don't really watch too much baseball. I only really watch uh, uh, fighting sports, but um, if I had to, uh, I'd go with the Cubs for sure. Excellent. So, how did um, how did you get the name Maximus? Um, that was my uh, so my my first son. He um, he passed away at five days old um, from complications. We're still not too sure of. Um, his name was Maximus, and uh, after that, um, I uh, I took a trip to Thailand for for two months. I just kind of bought a one way ticket and just really thought about my life and what I was doing and. I wanted to uh, carry his name on uh, because um, you know he, he didn't have the chance to, to do that for himself. So I figured um, I have a platform, I have a little bit of skill, and uh, I'm going to dedicate myself uh, even more. And um, so I took on the name Maximus as well, and I named my gym as well as Maximus Muay Thai. So tell us about uh, Glory Kickboxing. Uh, for those of us that you know know a lot about, say the UFC or the uh, you know like uh, regular boxing, what's the main difference between it and those other sports? Well, glory kickboxing, I would say, would be the UFC of kickboxing. I mean, they are the, the premier kickboxing in the world. I mean, they're putting on the, the most shows, um, shows all across the world uh, consistently, and um, they're continuing to grow. Um, the big difference between them. I would say, obviously, it's just the ground game. There's no, uh, there's no takedowns. I mean, the guy can like, if a guy like hits the ground or whatever, if it's from a strike, it's an instant count, like just like how it is in boxing. Um, but if he slips or something like that, the guy is allowed to stand back up and then continue on. And there's no use of elbows. Um, it's basically punches, kicks, knees. Excellent. So for those uh, fans of MMA that complain, you know what, I'm not really into the grappling or the wrestling. I want to see more striking. It sounds like uh, kickboxing would be the way to go. Yeah, it's actually it's actually really surprising that a lot of people ha it hasn't caught on as much as I think it should, and it will eventually. A lot of people do. They get, they get bored of what, when it does hit the ground. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the stuff's very technical. It's not for me. Um, but uh, guys are allowed to, you know, take deep breaths, kind of hold each other, slow down the pace uh, of the fight. But, you know, when you've got two guys, um, you know, just standing there and, and, and going, you know, doing work and uh, trading and, and boxing and kicking and moving, that's the most exciting part. Uh, even, even when it's, it's in the UFC, it's still like those are the, 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 the best fights to watch when, when they are standing up and banging. So tell us about that uh, tournament victory you had. Oh, that was, um, yeah, that was, uh, when was that? That was, uh, May 13th, 2016 in, uh, Los Angeles. Um, I, uh, I, well, my, my wife had, uh, we had our, our twin girls, um, and they were in the NICU, uh, at that time. And I, I was, man, I was sleeping like three hours a night. That was, and I was still going to work. I was still training twice a day. And I don't know what, what carried me, just, just my, um, reluctant will, I guess. And just, just my craziness, but I trained for that whole camp and um, uh, spent many hours in the NICU. And I went out there and um, 
fought two fights in one night and uh, uh, brought home the trophy. Oh, wow. So um, how how different of training do you need to do for multiple fights in, the, in an evening? Or do you do the same kind of things? Yeah, we kind of, we have a very, I would say, like, savage-type style. We're very physical on the way we, we train. Uh, we do a lot of um, uh, Dutch-style drilling, I would call it. Um, it's more of, like, body-tempering. Uh, we're very, very physical. A lot of a lot of guys that come and train with us just really, they, 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 they kind of come once or twice, and, and they don't really come back after. Um we're just very physical in the way we do it. And it's, I'm not saying it's, it's the only way to train. It's just that's what the, the what I feel is, is the best way for, for myself to train. And I've kind of designed a program and a way that we train. And the way that we train realistically, I mean, um, I believe I could fight, you know, three, four times in the night. I was going to ask you, are you the real Mark Calloway? But not everybody might know who Mark Calloway is. <laughs> uh, so I'll... Uh, you could use his character yeah. name, The Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's funny that you say The Undertaker because I do happen, my, 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 one of my other businesses is I engrave tombstones. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I guess it was that. Yeah, that's what got me thinking it. When I saw I trade you, uh, you do that for a living, I'm like, wow, shoot, uh, he he definitely encompasses the uh, angle more than uh, the other fella. Yeah, I was going to say, the other guy used to be a basketball player, and then that's his character on the side is, you know, uh, being an undertaker, where, you know, yeah. yeah, obviously, yeah, you literally do uh, that aspect of, uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my buddy's always trying to get me to, to bring like a like a tombstone that I engraved with my opponent's name on it. <laughs> they think it would be pretty funny, but I don't. Um, I, I'm I'm very big on respect in martial arts. Um, I'm very big on, on um, letting your uh, let, let your um, your skill do the talking, and not so much um, outside of the ring. I've just never been really big into that. Oh, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Since the thing that you do is real, you know, doing that would be, like you said, it would be disrespectful. Yeah, now if you ever, you know, you know, retired from this and joined WWE or TNA or any of that fake stuff, then, yeah. yeah. Then, oh, my gosh, yeah, you would have to. Oh, for sure. It. Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> yeah. It would be. Yeah. Let's see. So, in the way I understand, it's a family tradition. Yeah, so my family's been doing it. My uh, grandparents, we owned um, Meyer Granite Company back on Belmont and Cumberland down in Chicago, uh, I don't know, like 30, 40 years ago. And my family's kind of always done it. So there's no school for it. So we just ended up uh, uh, doing it. Um, uh, I just ended up kind of falling into it. I've been doing it since I was pretty much 12 years old, going on the truck in the, in the summertime with my uncle or you know, my cousin and just kind of, just you know, making some money and stuff like that. And what better, uh, especially with the freedom I get, um, uh, to, to continue to chase my dream of kickboxing and, and being competitive at a high level. One of the quotes I read of yours was about how you uh, believe that you are blessed or that life is a blessing. Uh, would you uh, elaborate on that some? Uh, yeah. You know, I mean... Realistically, you know, I, I, I listen to I listen to some motivational stuff, but I always try to keep myself grounded, keep myself humble, and, and look at um, where where I came from when I was younger. When I was younger, I had a little rougher rougher childhood, um, you know, and uh, a lot of things. A lot of my friends um, ended up in not not too well places, and and or not even here anymore. And, and my life could have really taken that kind of toll as well. Um, and I still see people to this day that that um, they're also in, in not so well positioned. But it's just, um, you know, uh, being blessed, I think, definitely helps a lot, but, but also just a continual grind uh, and, and making one small decision, right decision after another, just continuing to do it day after day. And eventually, it's, it's just you're building stock in yourself. And um, eventually, you know, it, my dad always said, if you just be a good person, you do the right things, the good, the good and right things are going to happen to you. So, um, I, I, I'm a big believer in that. How uh, far are you on your uh, quest to becoming the champion? You know, it's not. It, it used to be my quest. I guess when I first started, it was like, you know, I, I want to do this. You know, I, I, I wanted to be the first American to fight in the 
Stadium. Um, or, I mean, I wanted to just fight in Lupini Stadium. And then I ended up being, because um, they built a new Lupini Stadium, I actually was the first American to fight in that new, uh, new stadium. Um, and as I get older, it's not so much about becoming the champion. What I'm more looking for more than anything is just to know that I lived my life to the fullest. And and to to, to show my kids that, that, that I wasn't afraid to, to chase my dreams, to live my life. And, and what I think is really cool is that, you know, I mean, even this interview or, or, or anything on TV, my kids can look me up, you know, when I'm not here or when I'm gone or my grandkids can look me up and say, hey, that's my granddad, you know, that's my dad. You know, he was, he was a savage. He was a humble man. You know, he worked hard. He chased his dreams. And, and that's what's really the most important to me. Do you feel that, uh, you know, the family, the, the kids help keep you uh, grounded and humble? Absolutely. You know, they, you know, watching them be a father, it's more fulfilling than anything in this world. Um, I, I can't, you know, the, every day I get to see them and watch them grow, it's just, that is just a tremendous blessing. And, uh, you know, watching them, I definitely feel like it helps keep me grounded. It keeps my, my things in perspective. Um, you know, I, I used to, you know, get, get kind of crazy you know, if I lost a fight or, or if I just didn't perform well, I would get real down on myself and, and um, you know, hit, hit some lows. And, um, you know, now that, you know, the kids and stuff, and, and I know now, too, uh, that, you know, I, every training camp, I get up early. I put in that time. I put in the work. I know what needs to be done. Um, and, and I continue to push myself for greatness. Um, but, but then after, I know that, you know, my, my, I know I've given it all. And I know I can look my children in the eye and, and tell them I gave them my all. And, and they know as well. They, they, they see their dad working his butt off. Prior to your fight at uh, Glory 44 with Morales, there were talks of uh, since he's in Chicago and you're in Chicago about training together. Uh, since the fight, have you all uh, set up anything? Actually, we just we just met up the other day. Um, he actually came over. Was it Wednesday? It was Wednesday. It was uh, um, last Wednesday. He came over with his uh, coach, and uh, and we we had a great training session. Um, it, it was awesome to come over. He he is a he is a great guy as well. Um, very hard worker. Very humble guy. Just very very grateful of life in general. Um, I really like his positivity and his attitude. He came here, and I mean, he just we all got got right to work right away. We drilled for for a good hour hour and a half, and you know, and then we got some nice spar rounds in. Um, no animosity, no hostileness, just just some really good hard work. That's awesome. That's the that's the thing I am always amazed by with combat sports is how that you know during the fight. You know they're your opponent, but afterwards, how uh, you know how people can get along and uh, collaborate. Yeah. Well, the one the one thing that was really cool that was um so my 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 uh, my son Alec and my my daughter Brooke, you know, they're a little older, and they they uh, they they like hey hey who's that who's 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 that guy? I'm like oh that 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 that's Danny, and they're like he's Danny Morales, the guy that you fought. And I go yeah. They go. What, 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 why is he here? They go, we're going to train. Do you, do you guys are friends? Do you, they, they look so puzzled. And I said, yes. I said, guys, listen. I said, we don't have to be angry to fight each other. We're just, we're, we're competitive. Like you play baseball or gymnastics. You know, we're competitive in the sport. Um, you know, we're trying to do our best. It's, it's no animosity. But, hey, we're going to compete to the best of our ability. We're going to try and push ourselves to the best. And we're going to be friends after. We don't have to hate each other to fight each other. And they're like, oh. Oh, can we come downstairs and watch them? It was, it was, it was really cool. It was, it, was, it was a really cool life lesson That's awesome. um, that, that, they, that they picked up and learned that day. So tell us, uh, if you could fight anybody, who would be your on the top of your wish list? Uh, you know, I don't really have too many people I'd like to fight. Um, like I, I, I really like to fight anyone. Um, I don't. Um, but the one guy that I would honestly like to, like to get back in, and I'm pretty confident I will, for the end of my career is uh, Antoine Pinto. And then, uh, let's see. Tell us a little bit about uh, your coaches, you know, um, how they impact your career. Um, I mean, I have, I have just, 
that's the one thing too is like when I was first starting I had a coach Tim Topars. Um, great guy, you know, he, he was really, you know, about two days a week, he had a family, a job and stuff and everything, and not too many guys, especially in Chicago, have ded- can dedicate themselves fully to kickboxing, like how they do in Europe and, and other countries, so it's, it's very hard to find a consistency in coaches, so when I first started, I mean, I was hitting the bag a lot by myself, I mean, I had some direction, but a lot of it was just drilling with my buddy, um, I mean, it was just him and I, and we just worked out for like three, four hours at a time. And then as I, as I, you know, as I started rising up a little more, um, I ended up meeting uh, uh, Mike Valley, um, which he's uh, he's coached a bunch of UFC fighters. He's one of the, one of their striking coach. Um, great, great guy. Uh, VFS Academy is his, his gym, and um, he just, you know, he puts great stuff, great mental work. Um, you know, he's very big about believing in yourself. Very big on pushing the face and conditioning. Um, and I also have uh, Chris Saiton from the Cellar Gym. He's out in Min- Minneapolis uh, or St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, he's about six hours away from me. But uh, I met them with um, Waco, W-A-K-O, and they called me, and they knew they were, they were looking for um, an American to fight in Russia uh, uh, and uh, someone to fight in Africa. So they called me because they knew I was crazy enough, and you know I, I went over to Thailand by myself a few times and already fought. And, um, I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. So, like, we can't tell you who you're fighting, but you're going to fight probably one of the best guys in the world that they have to offer. They're not bringing you there to win. So, I, you know, I jumped all over those opportunities and, um, you know, great trips. And uh, he's a great guy. I love, I love going out there working with him. They're very, they take me in their home. They, they hope, you know, hope to pass for me, gets my workouts in. I always ask them, hey, can I help out? This and that. He, no, no, just go relax. You know, very good guys. And um, then I got Ian Alexander. He's from originally West Virginia, I believe, or Virginia Beach. And uh, he came out here, and, and uh, he's kind of like my brother. We, we look similar. He has five children. as well. He has, I have six children. He has five. Um, but, uh, but he's been, uh, him and I have very identical views on how to fight. Um, so we really sit down, and we really break down um, uh, the opponents, uh, really work on skill development. Um, so I, I, and plus the team that I built here, you know, my, I have a, a fighter named Bam, uh, Buffalo, uh, Slate. Um, a lot of my guys here, we really, uh, Dan and her, uh, we just developed such a w- wonderful, high level striking team here. I'm, I'm very, very confident in them. So, uh, what sponsors make this possible? Who, you know, what uh, what companies back you? Actually, that's a, man, we got uh, Trogren Marine Performance. He's been like sponsoring from the beginning. He sells very high-end boats, a great guy named Scott, um, been there from the beginning, uh, just just always just, just believed in me, saw, saw my will and drive in the gym, and was just, just always stood by me, um, uh, Lou, Lou Dower, very nice older older woman, um, she lives out in California, just love the combat sports, and she always comes out to my fights, and you know, she's always in the front row, always cheering me on, and Illinois uh, lifts equipment, they sell forklifts, um, guy Mike I met um, through mutual friends and so he's been uh, supporting me from the beginning. Uh, Converts Technology Specialist, it's an IT company. Um, they're, they're they're just I mean a lot of these guys are just they, they just they, they see my drive and my will and um, I, I'm still you know surprised and I just feel so blessed that, that they're like I give them a call. Yeah, Bridge, whatever you need, man. And uh, WT Engineering, um, you know our combat corner. From for all my gear, you know they're based out of Wisconsin. They have the best gear, um, you know, all, all around. I believe I, I told them from the beginning. I, said, I won't use your gear if I don't if, if I don't think it's well. I'm kind of a gear snob. Uh, I like my gloves and stuff. And, and uh, recently, I just actually uh, uh, got uh, uh, Grunt Style to sponsor me, um, which, which they're a phenomenal company, all veteran based, military based company. Um, just just great group of guys. Uh, and girls, I mean, just a fun work environment. I really believe in the product. So, um, do you have a fight scheduled uh, for your next fight? Yes, I believe it should be. I believe it's February. Um, I'm trying to figure out all the details. Um, I, I wanted to fight before the end of this year. Uh, it, it, unfortunately, it didn't work out. Um, but I am also opening a gym. Uh, I'm opening up a bigger gym. I'm opening a 30... 30- 3,600 square foot gym in Roselle. 
Um, we're, we're doing it. custom bags, new mats, showers. I mean, we're doing the works in there. So um, that's been taking up a lot of my time as well. But uh, um, yeah, it looks like I'm going to be fighting uh, early next year. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah. tell us how the fans can follow you on social media. Yeah, you can go to, um, I got a fan page on, on Facebook, uh, Richard Maximus Abraham, or my, my gym name is Maximus Muay Thai. Uh, on uh, Instagram, it's uh, Muay Thai Chicago, and also Maximus Muay Thai for, for the gym or whatever. Um, uh, Snapchat, I guess, Muay Thai Rich. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. If anyone ever, ever wanted to contact me or ask me any questions, I'm very responsive. So, you know, even like questions about combinations or diets or anything like that, I always, I always try to reach out, give back. Definitely. Thank you, uh, Richard, for uh, coming on the show. Thank you very much.